I don't know if it's the healthiest way to start feeling better, but do you want your fish? I don't think there's a big enough fish in the world. Hi! Leaf Nation Dan Witness Frost and Lucas! Oh, Austin Matthews is the lead! Why do I watch hockey stressfully? Mostly. Are you in? You know what? It doesn't matter that they lost. You guys are still good boys. Consolation cookies. There you go. You deserve it. You deserve it. Why? Rip the bandit off. Just rip it off. Leafs lose 7-4 to four to the Boston Bruins in Game 7 of the Stanley Cup quarterfinal. Man! Doing the last LFR video of the season sucks. It always sucks. Yeah, I continue making videos, of course, but this is LFR, least fan reaction. I make one of these after every game, and I can't do that anymore this season because there are no more games. The Leafs have been eliminated. I realized something about this loss. I think this is the worst I've felt about a Leafs loss since at least 2004. 2004 when the Flyers eliminated the Leafs in the second round, which, gosh, I missed that. The whole second round thing, you know, anyone 13 and under, you're just gonna have to take my word for it. 2013 sucked. That sucked a lot. Leafs come back from 3-1 down in the series. They force game seven. Stop me if this sounds familiar. And then they have a very bad third period no boy but let's be real that team sucked everyone was screaming from the top of their lungs that that Leafs team was lucky to be where they were in the five years that have followed a bunch of the people who were saying that got hired by NHL teams let's say they beat the Bruins all right so they go on and they play the Rangers who they played well that season okay and then in the third round they get the Penguins really next I guess you thought they were gonna beat the Blackhawks no that was never gonna happen so then the next year happened they make some additions they're doing well 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 late season collapse they miss the playoffs next season decent 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 they're in a playoff spot fire their coach everything goes downhill the rebuild truly begins hard to watch but ultimately we were cheering for them to lose because we wanted them to tank and it got the Mitch Marner the least best player in these playoffs the next season we cheered for a tank losing does not even hurt our feelings we want to finish last and they do and they win the draft lottery and they get cornerstone of the franchise Austin Matthews and then somehow this fast young, incredibly inexperienced, but incredibly fun team made the playoffs in the third period of the second last game of the season and got the privilege of taking on the President's Trophy winning Washington Capitals in round one. No one gave them a chance. And they stuck with them every inch, every second of the way. Five of the six games go to overtime, six overtime periods, and the Leafs even had a 2-1 series lead at one point. They made the Capitals feel mortal. And I was even at game six when they were eliminated, and I remember not even being sad. I was swearing under my breath because, ah, oh, they were so close, but really, that was house money. That was incredible. The fact they were even that close after no one expected them to make the playoffs, let alone do well in them, it was great. Then there's this year. I don't have this jubilant fun, well, we were playing with house money anyway feeling. My feeling is empty. It's hollow. It's genuinely sad. I'm heartbroken right now. My, my team, my freaking team, man. And yet, this is what we asked for. Oh, I know, I know. Work with me, though. This is what we asked for. We asked for a full rebuild. We got a full rebuild. We prayed for them to draft well and even win the draft lottery, and they did. We kept begging for the day that we could finally call the Leafs good, and they show up with a 105-point performance in the regular season. They're good. And when your team is good, what do you have? Expectations. Optimism. And, cruelest of all, hope. The rebuild is the easy part. Go young, lose some games, gain some lessons. This is the hard part. This is where you can and will get your heart broken. This is the pain they warned us about. That's the long and short of it, okay? That's what it is. Maybe you've never thought of it that way before, but that is what it is. So, now that you do know that, even though the Leafs are out, I gotta ask you, are you in? If you are, remember, this is what you're signing up for. Oh, I know you want to win. Everybody wants to win. But if you're not in now, it's not going to mean as much to you later. It's not going to mean to you what it means to us, those who have been here the entire time, dreaming and hoping and believing. When the Leafs won game five, I believed they would win game six. The closer game seven got, I believed they would win game seven. When Kapanen scored that goal, that goal, that 4-3 goal, heading into the third period, 
I believed the Leafs were gonna win game seven. You can say the things that hurt as long as they're true. They should have won game seven. Seeing John Ferguson Jr. celebrate in the Bruins management box bleh, makes me sick. But I believed in the Toronto Maple Leafs long before he ruined them. I was in long before that era. Mystifyingly, I was in during that era. I was in after that era and I'm still in now. I'm in for the good and I'm in for the bad. I am in. Are you? We could always use people on the in team. We have free cookies. It's funny, after all that, the game seems like an afterthought. Let's go through it a little brokenly. Patrick Marlowe has still got it, baby. Bruins take a penalty pretty much right away. Gardner sets up Patrick Marlowe, snipes on two Garas, 205 in, one nothing Leafs. Jake DeBrusk, Jake DeBergeron, whatever the hell you have to call him. Why is it always Jake DeBrusk? Scores on a Bruins power play. It's tied. We're not even five minutes into this thing. Minute and a half later, Marlowe snipes again, 2-1 Leafs. Stanton, how the hell did you scratch him in game six? Heinen scores to tie the game up at two. And Bergeron, why does it always have to be Bergeron? Scores his first of the series. Really? That's the first of His first of the series to put the Bruins up 3-2 at intermission. And even worse, leading up to that late third period Bergeron goal, Morgan Riley takes a Zdeno Chara slapper to the face. Even Brad Marchand was immediately calling for the trainers. When a guy whose whole thing is not caring about you or your general well-being is scared for your well-being, you might be in trouble. And it's funny, you see the trainer whispering over to Babcock and Babcock's like, stitch him up fast. And Cherry's like, ah, oh, he'll be back, it's game seven. And I'm tweeting about, oh, in 20 minutes, everyone's Abby is gonna be Morgan Riley wearing a full cage. Lunatic comes back with stitches, no cage, nothing! A few Leafs have gotten a lot of praise in this series. Mitch Marner, highly deservedly so. Thomas Placanis has had a coming out party. Patrick Marlowe was great in this series, great in this game. Freddie Anderson stole a few games, was obviously not very good in this game, and we'll get to it. Morgan Riley, probably the Leafs' most underrated player. You know, there's this debate going on about who should be captain, and it's probably gonna be Matthews going forward, let's be honest. But Morgan Riley is always mentioned as being part of the leadership group, or one of the big cornerstones of the leadership group. And thank goodness for a team that can't defend, teams try to avoid him defensively, he's lights out offensively, and he's just tough as nails. Straight up, if you don't like Morgan Riley, I don't like you. And just as the Leafs scored 205 into the first, in the second, 207 in, Travis Dermott snipe! His first of the playoffs, there's a bunch of those, and the Leafs tie the game up! Then they take a penalty. And that's bad. But then Brad Marchand had to get into a foot race with Kasperi Kapanen, and that's bad for Marchand. In alone on Rask. Oh, oh, oh. Tuka's just like. <laughs> Kasperi Kapanen scores! Leaves go up 4 3. Oh, does that kid score big goals? So how does he not make the team out of camp next year? The, the answer is he does. The good news about the particularly young and inexperienced Leaves going forward is all of them, where you say, how don't they make the team out of camp? They all do. Kapanen, yep. Janssen, yep. Dermott, yep. All of them. Kapanen with the shorty. We're not even halfway through this game. And the Boston Bruins, who outshot the Leafs 13-6 to in the second, cannot solve the Leafs. Defense cannot solve Freddy. And we head to the third period. Leafs, one goal lead. Okay, whoa! Okay, 20 minutes, let's go. Minute and 10 in, Tori Krug takes a shot score. I just don't know what happened. On the broadcast, they were saying uh, Freddie wasn't quite ready for it because it was right off a of face-off. Uh, I hope that's not the excuse, because it's a pretty bad one. He might have been partially screened for a little while, but I, that shouldn't have gone in. That's Krug's second of the series, both at the beginning of a period, and both shouldn't have even gone in, and the Bruins tie it up 4-4. And I'm getting into all kinds of ridiculous negotiations in my own head. All right, this is actually kind of good, I told myself. If the Bruins were going to tie it up, I'd rather they do it now than 15 minutes from now. Because if they do that, then they get all the momentum. At least this way, the Leafs can, you know, get it back. And then 525 into the third, there's no other way to say it. Jake DeBrusque stole Jake Gardner's lunch money. Jake DeBrusque has been incredible in this game, incredible in the series. There's, there's going to be time to compliment the Bruins later. Jake Gardner got eaten alive on this play. Eaten alive! This wasn't like a giveaway. This wasn't even an odd man rush. This was the Leafs with the, they were fine. Gardner is in front of DeBrusque with, with space, with, with, he's back. DeBrusque is coming at him full tilt. You played seven games, you know how fast he is. Turns way too late, but he's still at least neck and neck with him. DeBrusque is practically in the slot when Gardner decides to play the body. When he decides to play the body, he takes the stick out of the mix. Debrus makes his move as a result, and he snipes.
Zeitz on Freddy. It's 5-4 Boston. And they take the lead permanently. A few minutes later, Zaitsev is in a battle behind the net, and there's there's a loose puck. Gardner's got Bergeron. He's got body position on Bergeron, but then he cheats towards the net because no one's there. Which, if there was any defense of Jay Gardner there, someone should have been there. Marner, Kadri, I don't know. But because he didn't commit to Bergeron, he makes the pass in front to Pasternak. That's it. Marshan gets the empty netter to put the cherry on the turd. The Leafs lose 7-4 in Game 7. They lose in Game 7 again. Now after the game, Jake Gardner looked devastated. I'm not a big, the players should talk to the media guy, but he talked to the media, and I'll definitely give him props for that, and he owned it. He said it was a terrible game on his part. Let's be frank, probably the worst game of his career. Probably. I'm not a big plus minus guy either, but uh, minus five. I saw a lot of people out there going, if you think Jake Gardner caught the Leafs this series and you don't know what you're talking about. There's two extremes, okay? A lot of people are saying he's a bum, trade him, get rid of him. I don't blame you for saying that this morning, but you are being emotional. Pot, kettle, I know. Gardner's got his blemishes. Gardner does some things fantastically. The problem is the Leafs just don't really have the talent on their decor to give Gardner any support, really. When Riley went down, Babcock started riding Gardner like a pony. Well, who else is he going to play? Who should play in this place? A lot of you are going to say Travis Dermott, and he did score a goal in this game, and I think he's going to be a wonderful player in this league for a long time. He hasn't been good in this series. So the idea of, well, you could have just given Dermott the minutes, I don't believe that for a second. Really? Realistically, the Leafs should keep Gardner going forward, but what they got to do is add to that back end. It's not good enough. On a lot of nights, it can be like adequate, but if one guy goes down, you're in trouble, and if that guy is Riley, you're screwed. And Riley went down earlier this season, and they had Hainsey and Gardner put together. You can't just play them every shift. This is playoffs. It's different. But to everyone saying Gardner didn't cost them the series, I mean, maybe that's a little extreme. But he did have probably the worst game of his life, and the Leafs were winning the game until he made two horrific mistakes. I'm not going to be so cruel as to say he sucks and he needs to get off the team and he needs to be booted out of town, but he deserves to eat some crow. And he was mad at himself last night, and if he found a way to get to bed, he probably woke up mad at himself, and he's probably mad at himself right now. Which makes me curious to see where the Jake Gardner story goes from here. And it's just so unfortunate because in a series where goaltending looked like it was going to make or break the series. Tuka Rask was horrible in Game 7. Terrible! Don Cherry called him a 7. I think that was being generous. How many games out of 7 was Rask good in this series? One? And it was the first one? And the Leafs with all their firepower against a goalie who's a sieve and they're actually scoring goals. The Leafs' problem in this series was not an absence of goal scoring. you think they would win. And Gardner made a few mistakes, but Freddy was not good enough in Game 7. Not good enough at all. Now, did he cost them the season? No. That wouldn't be fair to say at all. He's pretty much a huge reason for why they're even here. Leafs won three games this series, and he straight up stole at least two of them. And here's how high the expectations are for Freddie Anderson. Even though he straight up stole Game 3, he allowed two goals, and neither was a good one, and people didn't like that. What, did you want him to steal the game better? It's the playoffs! Win or lose! And he won! But he lost this one. But it's ridiculous to say that he lost the game or the series. And now that I've said that, if it's ridiculous to say for him, maybe it's ridiculous to say for Jake. The guy I don't understand that much and can't understand is all the Matthews hate. Only four Leaf forwards were not minus players in this game, and only two of them were plus players. Zach Hyman was even, Kasperi Kapanen was even, Andreas Janssen was a plus two, and Austin Matthews was a plus one. He led all Leafs in shots in this series with 27. Mitch Marner was second with 17. He had 10 more shots than the second guy. Half the team didn't even reach 10. Heck, half of 27 is 13 and a half. How many players had more than that. The answer, not including Matthews, is three, Marner, Bozak, and Marlowe. Difference being Matthews shot 3.7%. The Leafs scored 20 goals in seven games, and only one of them came in the first one, so in the final six games, the Leafs scored 19 goals. That's over three goals a game. He wasn't perfect in this series. He was also targeted to hell in this series. And the Bruins targeting the hell out of him allowed other stars to shine. I suppose it's fair to say he could have done better. I think it's also a pretty safe bet to say he will do better. But blaming him? Sorry. I don't get that one at all. Bruins fans, 
If I were you, I'd be proud of your team. I'll tell you, as a Leafs fan, if anyone was going to eat the Leafs alive, I am at least happy it was Jake DeBrusque, if that makes any sense. If it was Marshawn, I would be mad. If it was Bergeron again, I'd be traumatized. It's a young guy. This wasn't the ghosts of 2013 coming back to haunt the Leafs. Rask was terrible. The Leafs did a really good job against Chara. Bergeron was limited to one goal. You don't see Bruins fans complaining about him very much, do you? And Marshand was a factor, but he drooped as the series went on. It was the rookies, man. Danton Heinen finally contributing in Game 7, and Jake DeBrusque just crushed the Leafs. In a series where the Leafs should have had the depth advantage up front, and frankly, I still thought they did, Jake DeBrusque really helped equalize that for the Bruins. Without him, I think the Leafs walk all over them. Now, here's what you gotta worry about going forward, because you are going forward, aren't you? How exhausted is your team? The vets in particular. I don't think the young guys are that affected. And can Rask get his game back? Because if you thought the Leafs had firepower, have fun with Tampa. But I'd worry about that tomorrow, and I just feel relieved today, feel happy. Your fans are so crazy and wild and passionate, but the most of you do it without being a jerk. I watched the Leafs get destroyed in game two live in Boston and it was fun. You should be proud of your team but you should be even more proud of your city. I love Boston. Hate the Bruins but love Boston. The one thing I will say is give your own team a little bit more credit. I saw some Bruins fans go well you know I, I thought the Leafs actually outplayed the Bruins for most of the series. Oh would you stop? No they didn't. There were times the Leafs outplayed them. There were games where the Leafs outplayed them but for the most part the team that should have won one. The win wasn't pretty, but hockey rarely is. Questions, then we'll wrap up. What's your one takeaway from the Leafs 17-18 season? The game has changed. Expectations are genuinely higher. Also, this is the young course team now. It is theirs. Next year, what they gotta do is really hand it over to them. Why does this keep happening? Because we can take it, Hugh. Because we can take it. How are you feeling today? Sad because of a hockey game. So, generally speaking, life's pretty good. Are you Finn? Care to jump on the Sharks bandwagon? That's a pretty good dad joke. And on that note, we're stealing Joe Thornton too. How many hugs do you need? 67. This is incredible from I Draw Bears. I drew this during the second period. Four treats for getting to game seven. Oh my God, those are my dogs, man. I think that's a good note to end on. Uh, thank you. Between these videos and the podcast, you're part of such an excellent community. It's fun talking hockey with you. Woke up this morning, just hit 80,000 subscribers. Next season, who knows, maybe we get that silver button. But it's not about quantity, it's about quality. And you are quality. I'm happy to do these videos after every Leaf game, and it makes me want to do them more when I hear from people like, dude, I, I need you today, that, that was a tough loss, or that was a great win, can't wait to hear what you have to say. But what you don't give yourself enough credit for is you pick me up. Right around December the season, you know if you were listening to the podcast, I, I didn't know what I was doing. And you helped me figure it out, and it just gave me the, the jolt that I needed to finish the season strong. Ah, oh, the playoffs were fun. Always too short. I'm gonna get some rest this summer. Obviously, I, I'm not gonna stop making videos right now, but I'm gonna make it my mission to bring back this channel next season bigger and better than ever. There's uh, some things to tend to first. And with that, that's the end of LFR season 11. Steve, you didn't talk about that. You didn't talk about that. You didn't talk about the Leafs going forward to next season. What do you wanted to have done with that? And blah, 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 blah. There's gonna be videos, guys. If you want me to talk Leafs, you don't have to ask me twice. That is it for this season. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it and if you wanna see some more videos next season and if you wanna see what I have to say in the off season. Tell all your friends and thanks for being a part of this. And you can't go full biblical without signing a guy who was alive at the same time as Jesus! The Leafs get Patrick Marlowe on a three-year contract! Screw that plan number Full biblical! Don't say I didn't warn you. Mitch. Yes, Dad? For the last time, it's Patrick. Sorry, Dad. This team is ruining my life! Oh my god, Oilers fans are gonna gloat so much if they come back and win this. Oh my god, tell me about- Whoa! The net is that way, Mitch! Oh, yeah. oh my god, you're so old! Oh. And that's why you do up the straps, kid. Oh. Do you see? <laughs> do you see? Enough. Where are the cameras? Where are the cameras? I need to know where are they hiding the cameras! Because you can't play this Maybe it's under here! Oh. 
Okay, I took that too far. What a perfect metaphor this is because I think I'm finally broken! So we head to intermission with the Senators up one to nothing. All right guys, how did you see that one? I'm not gonna lie, I have no idea what I'm doing. What's the criteria for goalie interference? Sorry, what's the criteria for goalie interference today? You got the video pulled up in your Tamagotchi? Okay, good. Does Austin Matthews appear to exist? No, see, that's that's not good, he's not allowed. If he exists, that means he's probably breathing. Does he seem to be breathing in the video? That's even worse, who does this guy think he is? All right, yeah, that's definitely no goal. Here, I'll have Kid Rock make the announcement, okay? God, this league is smart. And Mitch Marner's secret weapon, it's a school day game. I'm hopped up on Mountain Dew! I'm gonna come at you like a spider monkey! And he's in the hurricane zone and they think they got him, but he's wheeling around. Oh! You are having a rough season. Am I gonna be able to edit this video? Yes. So he's wheeling around! Goes to the other side of the ice and Justin Falk's like, guys, I got him. Oh yeah, Justin, you really got me? What? Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to mourn the death of Justin Falk's ankles. Oh baby, there's a little player on the Leafs ice and he appears to be chugging something green. And wow, now he's turned into a blue flash heading up the ice. Ah! Yeah, Mitch, drag him! Sea salt, cinnamon, house-made cashew mil- What? Cashew mil- Ma- Cashew milk! Cashew milk! <laughs> Can I get a, can I get a picture of you? Oh, dang it! Oh, How you doing, brother? Yes, but can he kill a penalty? Shut your mouth forever! I don't ask for presents or anything like that. All I ask for is opportunities. I want opportunities to play in big games, and we got good players, and we got a good team full of good men. And when you got a good team full of good players and good men, you just want an opportunity to play in those big games and an opportunity to win. But just in case Lou's watching, you're looking for some last minute ideas. Did you get any gifts from your players yet? Yeah, you know, uh, Haynes and Patty Marlowe, they uh, got me a nice bottle of wine each. I'm glad they bought that for me. No one else was going to. We got a team full of children. Mitchie got me one of these Finnish Spingers, whatever they're called. Thought it was pretty stupid at first, but I actually kind of like it, to be honest with you. I'm getting the hang of it. All right, Mitchie, the Sen's got some jump, so we got to call on our secret weapon. Here's your bottle of Mountain Dew. Like I promise. Ah, uh, cool. Thanks, Dad. Uh, Mike? No problem. That's not all I wanted to talk to. Mitch, can you pay attention? Sorry, what? Oh my god. Mitch, I'm gonna give you a second bottle. What? That's right, Mitchy. It's Saturday. There's no school tomorrow, so you get to stay up past your bedtime. I can have another bottle of Mountain Dew because you get to stay up past your bedtime. And with that, he was no longer number 16, Mitch Marner. He was <laughs> Super Saiyan Mitch Marner with a brilliant flash of neon green hair! Freddie Anderson. And Scott Darling, okay. And they are jacked and they're going for it! We're going! One hell of a way to kick off a century! Leafs win! 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 Eight to one over the Carolina Hurricanes! Get hype! Large coffee! Seven at night! Afternoon games! It gets nuts in here! Pinch yourself, buddy! Pinch yourself! Oh, it's real! As a bunch of you pointed out, some incredible saves, particularly on John Tavares, who I'm pretty sure wanted to cry by the end of the game. Oh, it's okay, John, just wipe your tears on this Leafs jersey and oh! Oh, it's got your name on it! That's the darndest thing! You know, I didn't even order that. It was meant to be. You should go. Did you actually meet Austin Matthews' parents? Yeah! Yes, I did! Oh my god! Oh my god! Did you tell them? Thank you for your son? Yeah! Yes, I did! How many times? Not enough! You couldn't possibly! Bench seats! The MasterCard seats! Literally on the bench! Next to the Leafs and the smelly Bruins! You can literally smell how smelly they are! Oh my god! I love this kid! I want to run through a wall! And I'm talking to his dad. I know he did. I can remember seeing his face but what he said I was I was so frazzled I think he said I'm adopted now and I, but I don't know how legal that is and then afterwards he said thanks and I think we said bye and then they walked away and everyone's just looking like what just happened thank you so much to Mrs. Dangle Billy underscore Chili and underscore Erica X underscore for the pictures and footage I don't know which one of you is which scramble in front Pasternak's got it no, no. Oh. 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 Leafs one, high five. <laughs> oh. Mm. oh, bless you boys. You guys can go to bed. You want to go to bed? Here, go, go see mom.